Fred. What do we have in store for D-Lab's basic training today? Well, of course, we always have Fink. And I've noticed that every time we pull Fink out, he always has a little surprise. In this case, there is a bag of dirt and a wrench. I wonder why Fink always has these little things in the case with him. Contemplate that. All right. Today, we have a kit. Fender 5 F1 Champ. No audio output. So once again, consider these three things. Is it a ground problem? Is it build errors? Is it a bad power transformer? So let's take a look at this Champ and see what's going on. We'll start out with the unpowered visual inspection. Since it is a kit, we may stop right there. If it gets past that, we'll do a powered up check, check the voltages on the tube sockets. And then, if all else fails, we'll go to the schematic and verify that everything is wired correct. Here we go. Okay, let's start with a visual inspection of the build, see if we can spot anything obvious. Of course, the first thing I look for is ground wiring, okay? So normally on these kits, you would see the grounds tied to one of the studs of the power transformer, which I'm not a big fan of, but I don't see any wiring going down to those studs. Instead, it appears as though the center tap of the filaments goes up here to the 5Y3 tube socket base. And they grab the ground there, and then there's a wire zinging over here to what appears to be the first filter cap ground and the center tap of the transformer for the high voltage also meets up at that point. So I suspect we have some grounding issues, which is very common on these builds. And look here, we got this flying lead. I believe that is one of the output transformer wires that's not used. It's probably the uh, 4 ohm tap, and it appears as though maybe the 8 is hooked up. Let's take a look at the socket wiring now. I know it's kind of difficult to see in here, but this is the 6V6. So I'm just looking at his filament wiring and the other wiring, make sure we don't have any shorts. Things look okay there. Not the best of wiring, but I suppose it would work. But now we get over here to the 12AX7 and I'm seeing a lot of little flying leads here that are touching between pins. So that is not a good sign at all. If by chance the filaments contacted the high voltage on this guy, it could have damaged the power supply or the transformer. Let's take a look at the eyelet board now. Right off the bat, guys, if you take a look at that electrolytic and that one, they actually flipped. The negatives are facing up. Those negatives should be going down to the ground points. So here's the plan guys. I do not trust that this amp is wired correctly. I suspect that grounds are not connected. As a matter of fact, let's grab a meter real quick and we'll just buzz out the grounds on the filter caps. But at this point, I'm not very comfortable with applying power because if it's not damaged at this point, I may damage it, all right? So let's pop in a meter. So to check the grounds, obviously I'm going to have to attach to the ground point on the 5Y3 base. I'll go down here to the main filter cap. Yep, he's connected. Here's the second cap following the 1K screen resistor. And it's not. And then this cap would be for the preamp section. And it is. So somehow the ground never made it to the second cap. Alright, so obviously what we're going to have to do here is gut the amp out, correct the wiring issues, rewire it neatly, and remove the possibility of shorts on the tube sockets. But before I do that, I want to make sure that this thing was not powered in its past and the power transformer was damaged because then all these efforts would be for nothing, right? So what I'm going to do is leave all the tubes out. We're going to just power up the transformer itself using my Variac and let's just verify that we have voltages where they need to be and then I'll proceed with the repair. Using my Variac is simply bump 
the voltage. I just want to make sure that the windings are alive on the power transformer. So right now I'm on one half of the high voltage to the center tap. Look at there, got voltage, good deal. Let's go ahead and go to the other pin, make sure that it's alive. Yep, that one's good. Let's check our five volt winding now. Making sure that I don't short anything out. That would suck, wouldn't it? There we go. Yep, there's the five volt winding. Lastly, we need to check the six volt AC. Go up here. There we are. And yep, six volt windings are alive too. Good deal. So the power transformer is good. The other thing I want to check real quick, and yes, it's unplugged, is make sure that the primary of the output transformer didn't get blasted. And no, it's good. Okay, so it appears as though transformers are fine. I'm going to get this thing gutted out, rewire it, and I'll give you a final test. So yes, another kit build gone wrong. But the guy sent it to D-Lab, and I'll make it right for him. Well, my question is, is who manufactures this kit? He said he bought it off of eBay. The filter caps have the mod logo on them. So I'm wondering, is this a kit from the company that makes, like, the mod speakers and the black reverb tanks that you see in some of these amplifiers? Because what I'd like to do is get on their website and check out their build instructions and see how clear they really were. Because as you, you know, a lot of things do get left out on these kit form amps. So I pulled out the eyelet board. You can get a little bit better view of the soldering on those tube sockets. <laughs> but you think that's good. Wait till you see this. All right, so you can see all of our components mounted on the board. And of course, when you put leads through and you solder them, you clip them, right? Well. Not in this case, they're just bent over. And the one I thought was really interesting, you see these leads here? Those are the 68K resistors where the signal feeds in. So since the leads are just folded over and touching, they're just directly shorted out. So it's a good thing I removed this board to verify the wiring and we'll give it a really good quality rebuild. So now you can see why I simply cut the wiring and removed the eyelet board all this will be cleaned up. I'll completely rebuild this board, make it nice and neat and reliable so the guy can enjoy his Fender 5F1. Clean up and rewiring of the Champ 5F1 kit is complete. I'll show you this at two different angles so you can see the work that I performed. I've added a terminal board over here for the 120 volts coming in and the 6.3 volt AC distribution to the lamp and filaments. You can see our wiring is now short and nice and tidy. You can actually see the entire eyelet board for maintenance. Let me flip it around here. There's the wiring on our input jacks. Here's our volume control and the indicator lamp. She looks nice and neat and now it actually works. Let me fire it up. Alright, quick note, before I fire it up, the only tube that's original in this amp is the 5Y3. There was this tube which I believe was supposed to be a 6V6, but it says 1515 on it. I have no idea what that is, so I did not trust it. It's 12AX7, at least I believe it is, was also open. I believe that's because we had wiring that was cross-contaminating between pins and probably popped the poor thing. Okay. So I have replaced the 12AX7 and I put in a Sylvania 6V6. I'm going to power it up. And I have a guitar hooked up. Here she comes. See, so here we got plenty of volume. No feedback. No noise when it's turned all the way down. Good sign. So the champ is operating. So what's the lesson learned from this video? Well, as you know, the intention 
of this series is basic training. So if you're going to take on a project like this, you should have the basics of construction and somewhat of a level of electronic knowledge. That way when you dive into this project, it doesn't end up in disaster. So if you feel uncomfortable with it, seek out some assistance, even if you think you can pull it off.